welcome back to U Regina 120. Uh, this is yet another video of the 120 things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. Uh, and today we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, a long, long time before computers, before the scientific method, before any of that stuff became really common or popular. You know, to the, if you can have put yourself in the headspace of a hunter gatherer, uh, of someone who's kind of walking around, not really understanding all that much. Uh, about the world except for the, you know, how to survive, and is very good at surviving. But when faced with you know finding enough to eat and trapping animals and uh, you know hunting and you know the things that they are very good at, imagine coming across someone from the current time and you know current th th this this Western world and and having seeing that there there's something kind of wrong with them and that you know like some of us you know that the Western guy. Has has a little bit of extra weight on him. In fact, it's an unhealthy amount of weight. And so you'd have to explain the concept of an obesity epidemic to someone who has very little to eat, who has to work their ass off just to get enough to eat, has to you know find animals and kill them uh, instead of just you know ordering it using a click of a button on the internet for some high uh, tra trans fat pizza to be delivered at the, the whim uh, of, of someone. You know the, the the idea that there's this problem that you could have with a society where there's so much that you can eat and it's so easy to eat uh, that you can actually eat too much and damage yourself very easily. Uh, what? Wait, that's something else? Yeah, you had it. Okay. But, uh, so so you, you, you've, you've basically got this, uh, you know, problem, this thing that seems so ridiculous. You know, how could it be possible that you could eat so much? And not just one person, but a whole country of people could eat so much that they would endanger themselves. So it, it, it seems incredulous. Uh, and another example: imagine you're the first, you know, tr group or tribe or culture to have domesticated alcohol. You, you've managed to create this thing that has been able to, you know, make you feel not quite so in pain, perhaps to, to make social interactions a little bit easier. You know, you haven't quite developed it to the point where it can even get you fully drunk yet, but you've just been able to get a buzz off of this, you know, liquid. Uh, imagine trying to explain to that person that, in fact, that, that thing that you just created is going to kill hundreds of thousands of people, and it's going to cause liver damage and all sorts of problems. It's going to, people will have trouble giving it up. They will give up their family, their cultures, their tribe, everything about themselves in order to, to partake in this thing that you've created. It is un unimaginable for, for someone creating such a thing, or it would be very difficult for them to imagine how much damage that particular thing could do to other people's lives. Uh, and trying to describe it would be incredibly difficult. Uh, and to the point where if you would try to describe it, you, you th it, it's very likely that they would not believe you. It would be so ridiculous as to be unbelievable. Another example, if you go back to the, the, the days before Galileo, when we weren't really sure that the things in the sky really revolved around each other, and that the whole gravity thing uh, had, you know, works in the, the way that we understand it today. Imagine trying to describe the concept of the, at the Van Allen belts, the, the belts of radiation that are tied by gravity and what else uh, to certain parts in the sky between uh, celestial objects uh, to the point where if you try to travel through them, you get cooked. If you don't have radiation protection. Again, this this idea of having to be able to watch out for this mystical force that you have to explain what it is on a molecular level before they really understood the concept of the molecular level at all. It is so far beyond what they were expecting it to be ridiculous. If you tried to describe it, it would be almost to the point where it would be impossible. So this is what the, the, the frame I'm trying to build up here in describing the logical fallacy of the day, which is the argument from incredulity. The idea that because if you cannot imagine something, Therefore, it must be false, or, or that if there's no counter, or if there's no or no counter examples, then something must be true. These are just some of the many examples that would have caught very careful reasoners and very wise people of those cultures and of those times completely off guard. There's always going to be things, limits to our worldview, limits to the way that we see the world, the way that we understand the world, that we cannot expect and that we, we can only live to deal with if we are willing to put up with evidence that is possible, or that there may be evidence that's possible to, to, to um, disprove what we believe about the world. 
the, the argument in question on a formal level, going back to how we've described, de described arguments in the past, will go something like this. We have no premise for the first premise. We have no premise for the second premise. Therefore, there is no conclusion, or, or therefore we conclude something based on that. Again, we, this is similar to other previous logical fallacies in that there is no data leading to the conclusion we've drawn, which is necessary in order to draw a valid conclusion. But the, in, more importantly, uh, the, the, we, we've basically gone one step beyond that. We've gotten to the point where we can actually write off evidence that could allow us to understand the world in a better, in a more clear way, purely on the basis that we could not anticipate that evidence. That is a dangerous thing to do, uh, and it, ignore, it, it gives up valuable evidence and valuable input that could help us. And so we, we should always try to, if, if we are presented with a conclusion we don't understand, or if we're arguing with someone who tries to say something we disagree with, or has something to tell us that we don't fully understand, you know, allow them to try to make the argument. Allow them to, 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 to at least be given the benefit of the doubt that there could be something about the way we understand the world that is incomplete. And if they, you know, can give you that, all the better. Uh, but that it's at least possible that you could be mistaken on a fundamental enough level that you wouldn't even understand how you are mistaken. Other examples uh, in more recent uh, situations uh, there's been some discussions in the past couple of days about voter ID uh, requirements in Canada. Um, one person I was discussing with specifically even said he couldn't understand how it is that you could have problems with having ID uh, in, in terms of how could it be possibly a problem uh, to get ID in order to vote in this country. Even though there's over 100,000 people in this country who have not used ID to vote and have in the past been able to vote quite fairly and accurately using other means of identifying themselves. This is something that they were not able to anticipate, they were not able to understand that had they not looked up or been told the information, they would have never guessed it. Nevertheless, this is something that is part of the, the lives of hundreds of thousands of Canadians, uh, whether or not they were able to imagine it. Similarly, uh, people who uh, try to understand how it is a government can spend money uh, some people don't really put two and two together that spending money on the military is spending money. And so in their worldview, uh, it is acceptable to spend money on the military, but not ac acceptable to spend money on other things. Telling them that, yes, in fact, you actually have to pay taxes in order to, to maintain a military is beyond what their you know, level of understanding allows. And even though they, they uh, do not understand that this is possible, nevertheless it is possible that you know, that money has to come from somewhere. So this is yet another example of where, you know, you're, you're just because you, you don't believe something is possible doesn't mean that it's not possible to, or there to be examples where this can happen. So th this is kind of all, all the examples I have today. If you're interested in more, we can give uh, more examples. But um, just, you know, a, as a kind of summary at the, at the end of the day, uh, always be wary that your worldview may be incomplete. And that if, if someone else is, is going to give you uh, evidence, be willing to accept it. Um, uh, and the, uh, it, it's possible to, uh, to do this in a valid way, to basically say in good faith and in honest uh, inquiry, hey, I don't understand how it is that uh, you know, your conclusion could be supported. Uh, but the, the way to, to step beyond that and into the, the realm of committing a logical fallacy is to, to, to use that as an argument that the conclusion cannot be supported uh, because chances are it possibly could. Do you have any questions from the audience? Actually, no. Although that was very interesting. Excellent. And so, uh, hopefully you will join me in the next video uh, when we talk about probably yet another logical fallacy. But I will point out again uh, that uh, this is a free uh, series of videos and if you're interested in seeing and hearing more of this sort of thing, uh, there will be a Bitcoin address at the bottom somewhere where you can donate. So hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.